top 10 dungeon crawl games. Let's go. Now, before jumping right into this video, I just want to mention that I actually had to remake this list because I realized I put a ton of Simon games on this list. So with that being said, I just want to give a quick mention and shout out to Cthulhu Death May Die. I had to remove it from the list because I had too many Simon games on this list. Plus, I haven't played that game a bunch, but it was tons of fun to play and that is a great game to check out as well. With that being said, I also want to mention that people that normally watch these videos are looking for recommendations or just wondering what good dungeon call games are. And generally, Gloomhaven or Frosthaven is on that list. For those reasons, I'm not going to include those two games on this list. One, I haven't played Frosthaven, but Gloomhaven is also a really good game. But now that Frosthaven's out, that one's probably worth getting if you don't already own Gloomhaven. And if both those games look too big of a box or it looks too complicated to play, then I highly recommend you check out my number 10, which should be probably higher on this list. But because I'm talking about Gloomhaven, I may as well talk about this game now, and that is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This is a fantastic introduction into Dungeon Call games. It's not as complicated, it's not as long as Gloomhaven or Frosthaven. You still get to dive into the world of Gloomhaven. Great storytelling, and instead of putting out different tiles on the board, you're playing through a book instead. And it's just a really good game. It's at a fantastic price point. You get to play as different classes of heroes and characters. You get to level up, you get all the experience that you want from a dungeon crawler like Gloomhaven, but in a smaller version. Now, moving on. Before jumping any further into this video, I just have to give a quick shout out to Into the AM, who is not sponsoring this video, but they do have a 10% discount link and code that you can use down below if you like any of their graphic t-shirts. If you have watched any of my videos, you see that I do have quite a few of their designs. I like their style, I like their colors, I even really like the fit. They're great t-shirts and I highly recommend to look into them if you're looking for some good graphic t-shirts. They also have a membership program where you can get an exclusive t-shirt design every single month. So check out that link if that sounds interesting to you. And now let's get into number nine, which is going to be Arcadia Quest. This is a campaign based game for two to four players where each player will control a guild of three unique heroes and face off against one another. And not only that, there's also monsters that players have to be aware of that the game controls that will attack the players. As players play through their scenarios or the campaign, the heroes are able to acquire new weapons, gain equipment, and gain powerful abilities. Now, what's also really great about Arcadia Quest is if you do have the money and you enjoy the game, you can pick up some more expansions to it and you can mix and match them as much as you want. You can also make your own scenarios, which can be a ton of fun. The one downside of this game is if you miss the Kickstarter, then you're going to be missing out on a lot of the Kickstarter exclusives, which enhances the gameplay for this, which can be said about any Simon Kickstarter game that has a release to retail, but it's still a very unique dungeon crawler. You have to figure out where to place your miniature, so you have line of sight, so you're able to attack other players, try to avoid monsters when you're not strong enough to hit them yet. So if you're into that, check out Arcadia Quest. Now, moving on to something a little bit different, going into the horror section of dungeon crawlers, probably one of the first horror dungeon crawl games out there that they keep remaking, and that is Betrayal House on the Hill. Players will explore a haunted mansion of their own design, encountering different spirits and demons and discover different omens that will foretell their fate. Now, if you haven't heard of Betrayal House on the Hill, it's a fantastic story-driven dungeon crawl game where the players are, at the beginning of the game, working together to uncover different rooms. And when that happens, different omen symbols will appear and then eventually a haunt will happen. And when that happens, usually one of the players will become part of the haunt and the other players have to work against that player in order to win. It's a super fun game. There's tons of different additions to the game that help streamline the rules a little bit. I've only really played the first edition, but I'm sure the other two are great. Plus, if you're into storytelling games that change as you play through it, then check out Betrayal Legacy. Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition. This is an app-driven cooperative horror board game where you get to explore through a mansion 
where you have to investigate, discover different tokens, and there'll be different events that will pop up that will change the course of the gameplay. The game itself is actually pretty easy to learn. The app takes control of most of the work for the game. It also has a fantastic soundtrack, really adds to the atmosphere to the game. You're able to cast different spells, gain different items, and of course, fight different monsters. Now, I will admit, the more times you play this game, I feel like it can get repetitive, but I haven't played that enough to get me to stop playing this game. But if you're into investigation games, and you like to fight some horror monsters, then this is a great dungeon crawl game for you. Now, moving over to a classic dungeon crawl game that still holds its value, I'm talking about Mice and Mythic. Now, why I love this game so much is because of the theme. You're playing as these tiny mice and everything else around you is kind of big in comparison. You have to fight different enemies such as like insects. There's a cat you have to fight off. You're trying to gain cheese. All of it just makes for a very unique experience. It's also a family friendly game as well. It's not too hard to teach to kids. And it just fits the dungeon crawl theme very well. You get to roll dice, gain different items. You can even go on side quests to extend the campaign if you want to explore more of the world that this game has to offer, which is fantastic. Resident Evil number one. This Resident Evil board game takes the players to the Spencer Mansion. Players will reveal the map as they explore through the mansion. They must solve puzzles to unlock doors and continue through the scenario. You must rescue different characters from the star members and face off against frightening mutant zombie bosses. It's full of tension with great combat. And that's absolutely what I want in a Resident Evil game. I want to fight zombie bosses. I want high tension. I want a little bit of puzzle solving to help progress through the story. It's definitely not an easy game that has its moments. And there's tons of great characters to play as as well. All the classics. This one is definitely a great Resident Evil game. If you're looking for one, then I highly recommend to pick this one up if you can. Clank Catacombs, sitting at number four. Now, the reason why I have Catacombs on this list instead of the original Clank is because this one actually has tiles that will be explored differently every time you play. The map is always changing. There's different things that can happen, such as a ghost could be revealed. You're trying to free some prisoners that you find. It still has all the classic humor that Clank has. You can even mix and match the cards that you want from other Clank games in this one if you want. You still get to fight monsters to gain gold. The only difference with this one is you don't really know the way out 100%. And I would definitely recommend picking up teleport cards because there's a lot of caves that stop your movement in this one. And the only way to get out of those caves is by teleporting. I honestly just have a blast every time I play this. It's just a super fun push your luck deck builder dungeon crawl game. If that sounds fun, check out Clank Catacombs. Nemesis. Now this one is actually a different type of dungeon crawler. This one actually takes place in space and you wake up from your sleeping pod and realize there's something wrong with the ship. Generally, you have to break up in different teams to go check to make sure that the ship is still set to course Earth and to check to make sure all the engines are still working. Now, what happens is every time you move, they're gonna create noise and this will attract different aliens that wanna come and eat you or you could get infected and die. Also, players have missions that they're trying to complete before they're able to escape, otherwise they don't win. So you still have to work together to try to make sure that the main mission uh, is completed by making sure the ship will return to Earth and that the engines are not going to blow up as you are traveling. Now, this game can have highs or lows because again, uh, this is going to be a semi-cooperative game. And with that meaning people can turn on you if one of the missions says this player has to die for you to win which generally kind of brings down the mood of the game because then you just hope that player dies. You're trying to make sure that they get trapped in a room or something where an alien can kill them. And once you're killed off in this game, then you are out of the game pretty much. There's nothing for you to really do except for to sit back and watch the other players play the game, which is no fun at all. So if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then I don't recommend this game. If you're not somebody that's into games where people can turn on you, but if you have a good group of friends that want to work together, then this game can be a really fun time. 
And if you find this game too easy, then that you can check out Nemesis Lockdown. That one's a little bit more challenging. There's new aliens in it with different abilities. You can even drive uh, a car in that game to go outside. But I find that one pretty difficult and I just prefer the original Nemesis. And if you're a Nemesis fan, then you probably already know of the third game that is out on crowdfunding at the time of this recording. It's probably almost over or is over by the time this video comes out. And that is Retaliation, where that game, you can actually take the fight to the aliens. Looks super awesome. So if you're checking this out in the future, if that game's out, check that one out as well. Now let's move on to number two. Massive Darkness 2. Now I've never played Massive Darkness 1, so I really can't compare the two games. But I have played Hellscape and I quite enjoyed it a lot. Now what makes this one so fun to play for me is all the asymmetrical powers that the team has. There's a wizard, there's a rogue, there's a ranger. All of them have their very own unique game components and powers to news for you to complete the scenario. You'll use them to solve different puzzles in the scenario, feet harder enemies, open doors and gain treasures. Characters must move in different light and dark zones to be able to attack stronger enemies. And of course, this is a Simon game, so the production of this is a 10 out of 10. Now, if you only get the retail version, there's still plenty there to enjoy. So if you missed the Kickstarter, not the biggest deal, but again, there's uh, characters that you can add to the team to mix and match, to have a different party of different characters. There's just tons of variety when it comes to this game to have players keep coming back to. Whether that is different scenarios or characters that you can mix and match, just a fantastic dungeon crawl game, in my opinion, and that is why this one is sitting at number two. Now, for my number one dungeon crawl game, it's probably gonna be no surprise to any of you because you're probably wondering where a zombie side game is on this list. And Marvel Zombies is my number one dungeon crawl game of all time. There's tons of different zombie side games out there. Take your pick in theme, whether that's Western, space, medieval, all of them are very great in my opinion. Now why Marvel Zombies is my number one is because of the moments that it gives me and my family. My son absolutely loves playing this game. The miniatures are such great quality. They're so fun to paint and I'm just a big Marvel nerd so this game just works for me. But if you're not into the IP then check out any of the other Zombicide games. It's such a great system. There's tons of different themes. If you want to hear more thoughts about this game then check out my review for it right here and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.